Saint Lucia and I'd like to say you can see the diaspora. I'd like to also say hello to our friends over in Taiwan, the public of China and Taiwan, because we know that they are tuning in, watching. I am Lisa Joseph with uh, my co-host, uh, Polly Primus Hutchinson. We are in Castries, the capital of Saint Lucia, the House of Parliament where we have another auspicious occasion uh, um, occurring. We in joint session in the House of Assembly where we will be hearing uh, from the President of the Republic of China on Taiwan, President Tsai Ling Wen. Morning Prime Minister, welcome. Morning um, Alyssa, uh, as you rightly indicated, an auspicious occasion indeed, lots of pomp on ceremony and uh, of course the, ar the arrival yesterday um, and we will give you a, a brief look into the Sutton ceremony at uh, St. Jude. Um, currently um, we the, the president now. seems to have arrived um, uh, yes and there are lots of uh, students with uh, our the, the our national flag, flag and the flag, flag of, flag of, uh, of the Republic of China, China and Taiwan. Taiwan. ROC. Okay. And Primus, it's a very curious uh, scene on the outside. Lots of excitement. Our young people want to be able to get a glimpse of uh, the president, a very, very important political figure over in, in Asia, in having been, she's the, the first woman of the female uh, president in uh, the Asian um, sphere and uh, the first for uh, Taiwan as well. Uh, yesterday, she touched down and uh, St. Lucia is the final stop for President Asai on a four island as official state visit um, of the other the countries that are allies, of course, to the Republic of China on Taiwan. Yesterday, as I said, the pr President Asai and the envoy touched the down at the Hiranora International Airport. On screen now, we can see that the delegation comprising not just uh, officials, we do have um, what is equivalent to what we think would be the Secret Service, of course, keeping the, the president safe. You, they do have a very large contingent of media personnel. Oh, as yes, well. a very large contingent indeed. Um. There we uh, can see St. Lucia's uh, Foreign Affairs Minister there, Honorable Sarah Flagova. Um, and the Police Commissioner as well, Mr. Mosher. Uh, the, uh, the and they will be making their way, as we can see, members of the Royal St. Lucia Police, Police Force mm -hmm. right there um, for that welcome. But President Sai, as we indicated, is a very um, important political figure and um, as equivalent to Taiwan being a very important ally to St. Lucia. Uh, just a bit about uh, President Tsai, she was born in Taipei, Taipei City, there, the capital. And quite interesting, I, I, I was fascinated by this, hearing that she grew up at an auto repair shop which the, her parents uh, owned and managed.
also just had the national anthem of St. Lucia and the Republic of China Taiwan play. We're now seeing President Tsai. She's at the BS there. The civil exchange, police commission and more sharing. Now that she has um, she's now getting off the air and she will be escorted. And we can see the acting police commissioner there, Milton Daisy. She will be doing a quick inspection. She was also accompanied by a military personnel from from Taiwan as well. Absolutely. So, we're going to come. So, a while on the outside, the pumpkin ceremony is in full bloom here in the chamber, the parliament chamber. We are having the parliamentarians. Our oh, Prime Minister has arrived as well. Just now. Perhaps, um, Lisa, we can continue about uh, the, the, the President, um, President Tsai, her career. Uh, the professional and diplomatic career. Um, President Tsai began her tenure on Taiwan's trade negotiation delegation in the late 1980s. By 1990, uh, Taiwan began working on the bid to join the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, GATT, eventually gaining admission to the World Trade Organization, WTO, in 2002. She was on the front lines of the process during key negotiations in her capacity as Chief Legal Advisor from 1992 to 2000. She was thus a first-hand witness. Uh, I guess we'll continue on this now. But, uh And we can see that President Tsai now getting off that dais. And she is being escorted to the entrance, the parliament building, where she'll be greeted by the President of the Senate, as well as the Speaker of the House of Assembly. She will be escorted into the parliament building. At this time, Lisa, may I uh, continue on her career? Um, as I indicated earlier, she was just a personal witness to this landmark event in the history of Taiwan's economic transformation. President Tsai served successfully as senior advisor to the Mainland Affairs Council in 19, from 1994 to 1998. 
She was also senior advisor to the National Security Council from 1999 to 2000 and chairperson of the Mainland Affairs Council from 2000 to 2004, devoting her efforts to the development of cross-strait relations. Perhaps this, uh, we can uh, br uh, just briefly mention uh, the Republic of China and Taiwan diplomatic relations with St. Lucia. Um, Taiwan, excellent achievement in trade, technology, innovation, agriculture, industry, education, and healthcare makes St. Lucia Taiwan diplomatic ties crucial. Relations between the two countries continues to grow since the re-establishment of diplomatic ties in 2007. St. Lucia opened its embassy in Taipei in June 2015. St. Lucia has benefited from the cooperative agreement in many different areas, the Taiwanese scholarship program, the constituency development program, uh, fruits and vegetable demonstration, extension cooperation project, aquaculture, the ICT technical cooperative project, and the St. Lucia Taiwan partnership trade exhibition. Also, they, they finance the, the Hummingbird Beach Park project. Um, Taiwan provided visa-free travel for St. Lucians, which became effective on July 12, 2007, an agreement on a reciprocal basis. The two countries first established ties in 1984 under Prime Minister Sir John Compton, led administration. Taiwan is the 22nd largest economy in the world. I think you alluded to that yes, earlier on. Yes, yes. And you know, Pamis, you spoke there of the scholarship program. Our students, and since the re-establishment of diplomatic relations between our two countries in 2007, more than 1,330 St. Lucian students have applied for various scholarship programs, which is offered by the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan. And among them, we've had 148 students. Um, they've been granted scholarships, and many of them have completed studies and in Taiwan and have performed excellently, primers indeed. Mm -hmm. And um, and so. We also have Taiwan. We mentioned the St. Jude Reconstruction Project, not just the financing um, for the reconstruction of St. Jude, but we've also had more than 120 medical experts from Taiwan who've volunteered in St. Jude over the years. With the chamber has been called to attention. We can hear that drum roll. Let us pray. In the name of God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, by whom alone kings reign, and princes decree justice, and from whom alone cometh all counsel, wisdom, understanding, we, thy people, O God, gather this morning in your name. We ask you, gracious Lord, that you discern your wisdom from above to direct and guide us in all our consultations. And grant that we, having thy fear, always before our eyes and laying aside all private interests, prejudices, and partial affections, the result of all our counsels may be to the glory and honor of your holy name. Gracious Lord, true religion comes from you and justice the safety, honor, and happiness of the queen that we seek, O oh God, the public will, peace, and tranquility of St. Lucia, and the uniting and knitting together of the heart of all persons and estate within the same, in true Christian love and charity, one towards another, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. On behalf of the Parliament of St. Lucia, it is my enormous pleasure to extend a warm welcome to Your Excellency, President Tsai Ing-wen of the Republic of China, Taiwan. Madame Président, bienvenue à St. Lucie. I wish to acknowledge the presence of the distinguished government officials, legislatures, and business leaders of Taiwan, other members of the entourage and members of the media of Taiwan. Today is a special day in the history of our parliament. We welcome you as a nation with whom we have much in common. Our constitutions speak to the same freedoms, rights, and duties of the individual. We share the same values of democracy and perseverance. We share common ideals of equity and justice, common goals of national tranquility, social justice, and economic and social development. On the world table, our two nations may be small in size, but stand tall, proud, and large in hard-won democratic principles and ambition. Our parliaments respect robust debate, oversight, state accountability, and the representation and empowerment of our people and the development and implementation of laws that promote democracy and good governance. We look forward to greater interactions between our parliaments and to the continued purposeful building of relations between our peoples. Your Excellency, we are especially pleased that you have chosen to visit at this time during our 40th year of independence, a milestone in our nation's history. You will find the atmosphere still thick with the jubilance of our carnival festivities, and your visit here gives us further cause for celebration. It, is also, it also gives us the opportunity to further solidify and celebrate our long-standing deep and enduring friendship. President Tsai Ing-wen, thank you for coming. We are indeed blessed to have you and the members of your entourage here with us. And I now, uh, I now invite you to address at this August body. The Honorable Senate President Gerardi McIntyre, the Honorable House of Assembly Speaker Daniel, the Honorable Prime Minister Shashne, and Labour Party leader Pierre, government leaders, members of the parliament, the diplomatic crops, and my delegation, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. First, I would like to thank Prime Minister Chesson for inviting me to St. Lucia. It is an honor to share this special moment with you all and to celebrate the 40th anniversary of your country's independence. I am delighted to see many families, of, uh, many familiar faces here today. Prime Minister Chesson and Speaker Daniel have both been, been to Taiwan and many ministers visited Taiwan last year as well. It is indeed an honor to be surrounded by so many old friends so far away from home. St. Lucia has long been a staunch ally in the Caribbean. Prime Minister Chesnet forcefully spoke up for Taiwan 
at last year's United Nations General Assembly. And Minister of Health and Wellness, uh, Isaac, made Taiwan's voice heard at this year's World Health Assembly. I want to thank all of you for your courageous support. On behalf of the people of Taiwan, I thank you all. Your support means much more to us than you would know. And I hope you will continue to stand by us. Taiwan has much more to contribute, and we are determined to make this known to the world. I chose the themes of freedom, democracy, and sustainability for this state visit because these three values truly reflect our efforts in the Caribbean. We are dedicated to steadfast diplomacy and mutual assistance for mutual benefits with partners like St. Lucia. By our side, we can help advance regional peace and achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Over the past decade, our countries have undertaken many projects that embody the spirit of the SDGs. Together, we are ensuring health and wellness for people of all ages. Taiwan has always been more than willing to share our medical and public health expertise. And we are putting this willingness into action right here in St. Lucia, strengthening your healthcare system through mutual sharing and assistance. Yesterday morning, Prime Minister Chesnut and I attended a groundbreaking ceremony for the new St. Jude Hospital. This facility makes yet another important milestone in our many years of medical cooperation. And I am proud that Taiwan is able to take part in this achievement. Beyond health, we have also worked to pursue sustainable agriculture. In 2013, we initiated a project that successfully tackled black Singatoka disease in St. Lucia. Banana farmers now enjoy increased productivity, new international markets, and high profits. Today, St. Lucia is the only country in the Eastern Caribbean exporting bananas to the European markets. Our cooperation and agricultural development resonates with the work of William Arthur Lewis, St. Lucian's economist and Nobel Prize winner, who dedicated much of his work to ending rural poverty. We have made great efforts together in ICT as well. Internet infrastructure is vital for providing efficient government services and narrowing the digital divide. It makes it easier for people to get education, to find a job, to do businesses. And of course, reducing inequality is at the core of the SDGs. Here, I would like to invite all of you to join us later in a ceremony to launch the second phase of the government island-wide network. This will further broaden internet access across the island. Public infrastructure is the foundation for sustainable development in any country. And this year, we have initiated many major projects in addition to the St. Jude Hospital, we have also begun work on the international airport, as well as a national road system. These projects do more than build resilient infrastructures. They also create high quality jobs. That is also an important element of the SDGs. While project loans will come from Taiwanese banks, the work will be contracted to St. Lucia's companies through Taiwan's overseas engineering and construction company. This means 
we will be hiring local workers and using local materials. This model of cooperation ensures that both our peoples can participate and reap the benefits. There will be no issue of debt traps, unlike some other cooperation models. We believe in mutually beneficial projects rooted in strong communication and collaboration. Both of our countries want to provide brighter futures for our next generation. In line with the SDG goals to provide equitable quality education. Taiwan is honored to help young solutions develop professional skills and expertise through scholarship programs and vocational training. St. Lucian students now have access to more diverse channels to make use of their talents and give back to their communities. Students returning from Taiwan bring home new expertise, knowledge, and ideas, creating new possibilities right here in St. Lucia. My time here calls to my the words of another Nobel laureate from St. Lucia. The poet, Derek Alton Walcott, whose writing made readers all over the world fall in love with St. Lucia. In The Sea is History, he captured the many opportunities and challenges that maritime nations have faced throughout history. Taiwan and St. Lucia are small countries, and we both face challenges brought about by geography, access to resources, and climate change. Yet, we have both walked the long road to democratization. We respect the value of human rights and democracy. Our shared journey gives us a duty to work together to achieve regional stability, freedom, and democracy. Once again, I want to thank both Senate President Girardi McIntyre and Speaker Daniel for giving me this opportunity to address you all. Your government and people have been true friends to Taiwan. May all countries enjoy a sustainable future and lasting friendship. Thank you. Today, we welcome President Tsai Ing-wen of the Republic of China, Taiwan, to the sacred halls of our parliamentary body of representative government. Kindly permit me, Madam President Tai, to convey on behalf of the parliament our gratitude, thanks, and appreciation to you, your government, and the wonderful people of Taiwan for your kind support and assistance in many areas of cooperation. This we value and recognize on the basis of our mutual trade in the emotional currency of respect, friendship, appreciation, support, and truth. This, our shared covenant, is expressly manifested through the love of our peoples, bounded by dignity and the appreciation of democratic principles. Madam President, I want to assure you that the cherish cherished bonds of harmony and accord that we share between the Helen of the West, Indies, and the hidden jewel of Asia is far more than the social science of production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services that define economics in the broader sense. Madam President, our support and amity for Taiwan was not conceived out of a fetish to be popular nor safe. It is born out of a clear sense of devotion to each other, steadfastness, attachment, and allegiance, which signal to us that you are a provocative listener and prepared always to help our causes 
which need assistance. More fundamentally, Madam President, St. Lucia will always remain a friend to Taiwan under the yoke of the torch of liberty and freedom. Madam President, our principal belief in mutual support and of reciprocity tells us that you equally value such a code of character. Similarity of our topography of our homelands often resulting on merciful pounding of Mother Nature to catastrophic effect. After the aftermath of Typhoon Morocot in August 2009, St. Lucia made a contribution to your recovery. Ambassador Tom Chu, on receiving the contribution, said, on behalf of the government of the Republic of China on Taiwan and the people who suffered most, I would like to express my appreciation to Mr. King and the people of St. Lucia for your generosity. St. Lucia is a true friend of Taiwan, and I think Typhoon Morocot has bonded us together. And our then Prime Minister, Honorable Stephen King, said, this may be considered small, but I believe it is a symbolic demonstration of our support and appreciation, and also to give our moral support to the people of Taiwan, to show that we in St. Lucia value that very significant relationship between our countries. Though our contribution then of US 100,000 was a mere petit token from the crevices of St. Lucia's heart, we know that you value and appreciate our generosity of spirit. President Tai, it was only last night I gained knowledge that you are from the Ping Tong County. In October 2017, I visited Taiwan for the celebration of your 106th independence anniversary. And there I met a gentleman, also from Ping Tong Kong. He insisted then that our delegation had to visit Ping Tong. We had no regrets. It is indeed a picturesque town. Su Jia Chiang, president of the legislative Yang, has been since 2017 a dear friend to St. Lucia and to me personally. I invited him to St. Lucia to be part of our independent celebrations, and he assured me that once time permitted, he would visit St. Lucia. And true to his word, this year, he celebrated our 40th independence with us. Though work commitment meant you could not have been here on the day in question, as we continue to celebrate our young year-long celebrations, we indeed great, are indeed grateful that you are here in St. Lucia. We Madam President, we are indeed grateful that President Su, yourself, and other members of your delegation have been here and are here with us. For you, Madam President, we express gratitude, deepest gratitude to President Su and to all members of your team who have visited us within our 40th year of our independence. In the words of Gilbert Chesternan, I would maintain that thanks are the highest form of thought, and that gratitude is the happiest, happiness doubled by wonder. I thank you, Madam President. We have heard a very inspiring speech there coming from President Tsai Ling Wen. That her speech founded on the principles of democracy, freedom, 
uh, caring, making sure that allied nations are not just in step with Taiwan politically, not just pushing the cause of Taiwan on the international stage. Taiwan has been uh, at the forefront as the president indicated there of health global health issues and the fight continues for taiwan to be embraced in the world health assembly countries like Sinusha, allied nations to taiwan have been in that fight we also heard the president speak to the in the Hiranor international airport taiwan is providing the loan financing for the project, which is the largest single uh, capital project in St. Lucia. The Huron International Airport is due to be completed in 2020, in the third quarter primus of 2020. And the president said emphatically that the involvement, this business relation there, Taiwan is not a seeking of certainly, it's not going to be of a debt trap the president indicated there has been tremendous concern because it is a very large undertaking as a project costly as well and there's been there have been uh, concerns across the board as to how this project is going to impact St. financially and the president has stated emphatically as i indicated uh, that the taiwan that relationship is not going to be one where there is debt so interestingly, Primus, the St. Taipei and Castries last of August established ties, um, municipal uh, relations. And at this very moment, we're having President Tsai take that very, very short walk across to Constitution Park. And there, the, the launch of the second phase of the GINet project is going to happen. Uh, yes, uh, Lisa, um, she also emphasized, you know, the Taiwan's commitment to providing medical and health care expertise, providing the, the training for, um, for medical and health care. Um, of course, uh, she also indicated the continued uh, assistance to St. Lucia students develop professional skills. Um, the, I don't know if you can, you, you recall, well, just uh, when, uh, the president of the Senate, uh, Mrs. McIntyre, um, she also uh, welcomed the, the president in Koyol. So I think it's fitting that we should add a little Koyol to the proceeding here. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> okay, Mr. Madam, um, Taiwan, President F, I'm Aujourd'hui, before we end uh, your last piece on the proceedings here and what will transpire later on today. You know, I just want to say quickly, Primers, that we, we spoke um, quite a bit on the students um, returning to St. Usha, and you heard the president say that they're coming back with skill, but also new ideas, because of in that part of the world, it's about innovation, and, and that is what drives the economy. And so I know quite a number of uh, St. Usians who have studied over in Taiwan, and coming back home, and yes, they come in half, and when, when they come back, they come back with a, a, the refreshed energized and and you see new things in that part of the world and you want to be able to allow saint lucia to step in stride with that and so we are forever grateful in saint lucia for that influence that taiwan is having um where we have a new thinking coming out of our students who have been there stay tuned to the government information service and the national television network because coming up very shortly we'll be having that launch we've been speaking about of the gi net project the second phase of that which is helping st Lucia bridge the digital divide and ryan o'brien will be with you for that leg of the activities where we are celebrating 
the official visit of the President of Taiwan, President Tsai Ling Wen. I am Lisa Joseph on behalf of Primus Hutchinson. Thank you so much for being with us.